full of loneliness and misery and suffering and unhappiness, and it's all over much too quickly. The question is, have I learned anything about life? So I've had the Nintendo Switch for about a month now, and most of my time with it has been spent gaming with Breath of the Wild, Binding of Isaac, and a little bit of both single player and multiplayer with Shovel Knight. I gotta say, I've truly been impressed by the functionality of the single layer device and how it modulized into a portable and home dock entertainment system. These three games have been, for a lack of words, amazing. Now, a lot of people have criticized the launch of the console of not having a lot of game titles, and with that, it's true. However, it's enough to tie you over with new games such as those three, plus as uh, the reboot of Mario Kart 8, which just released in May, uh, and a slew of digital virtual games that you can download, such as Metal Slug and much more. And that's truly where the Switch shines, having the power of both on-the-go portability as well as in-home. When you took Breath of the Wild and boosted up on a 4K TV, it doesn't look half that bad after I enabled True Colors. So a tip, if you're gonna play Breath of the Wild on a 4K TV, be sure to go into the menu and enable True Colors. It helps a lot. Speaking of which, the biggest pro to this is have to say the integration of how you can have it in the dock, slide on the Joy-Cons, pull it out of the dock, and you're still gaming on the go. This may be a risk going into TMI territory, but you're not gonna truly appreciate this concept or this feature until you have to use the restroom. And I'm not joking. Seriously. Overall, build quality for the Nintendo Switch is totally fine. It's much sturdier, much more sturdier than the 3DS, which feels like a bunch of plastic, whereas this feels much more like a combination of metal, plastic, and a little bit of magic. However, because the Switch does not have a initial clamshell design like the 3DS, you're gonna be more inclined to have an inset fear that if you drop the Switch, you may break it or crack the screen or do some type of damage to it, unlike the 3DS, which has this nice protective, innovative, professional design. So a lot of people have, will recommend you to go with a type of sapphire or glass, tempered glass display to go over the screen of the Switch. Highly recommend it, not just because of the whole put it in your dock, you'll scratch the screen dilemma. Joy-Cons are another aspect of the Nintendo Switch, and speaking on them, they're, they're quite durable. However, because they're really tiny, using them on their own will probably be uncomfortable for people with big hands like myself. In fact, imagine those Snickers, right? You, you got a Snickers bar. You ever seen those fun size Snickers? Jack, have you seen the, the fun, fun, fun size Snickers? You never seen like little small like, like they're about the size the of vending machine kind of size. <laughs> Smaller than that. Oh. Like they're like little little pieces of chocolate delight, but they're just enough to tease you. So put these together, they're enough for you. It's like a full size Snickers. But separately, when you're playing like two players or you're playing, you know, something sideways, they're they're a little they're a little annoying to to have these big hands. Class. And they got even they got little shorter buttons too. And on their own, they're just they're just not that not that great. They're durable. Don't worry, that's, that's not going to break it. Aside from the size of the individual Joy Cons, the only other downside is that well, the analog sticks are kind of flimsy. It's really hard to press the analog button without moving the analog stick. In fact, when Jack was playing Breath of the Wild, there was a temple that has a puzzle where you have to get on a sliding uh, platform and crouch underneath a fence. He almost walked off the, the, the platform because he was trying to crouch without moving. It's quite annoying. I could tell from his, his eyes and his burning rage and aggression. It consumed him that day. The other downside to it is sometimes when you're trying to plug in or slide on the switch uh, controls, you don't always have a steady connection. You think you do, you don't. You have to actually slide in until you hear that trademarked uh, Nintendo Switch click. Right. And then you're locked in place. Overall, the console is actually pretty neat, it's pretty sleek, it's pretty nice. 
it's actually an innovative design and I really hate the word innovative design. People who know my first university will understand why I hate that word. However, I, I, I gotta give it to Nintendo. I've been a vocal consumer about my distaste with a lot of the decisions from the Wii, the Wii U, the Nintendo 3DS, the new Nintendo 3DS, the new new Nintendo 3DS and all their other crap and not having a charging port with the new 3DS and they're finally getting back into my good graces with the Nintendo Switch. The kickstand is probably the most flimsiest thing about it, but that's okay. It's a kickstand. You know, you're gonna have, you're probably not even gonna use it. It's okay, you just take that off and toss it. You'll be totally fine. The real question comes into the gaming library. How much are you gonna get out of the Switch before you get bored of it? Right now, there are a lot of games for it, but how many of those are actually new games? You have things like Breath of the Wild, the launch title for the game or the launch title for the console, rather. That's new. Mario Kart 8, it's more of a revamp of the previous thing that was launched for the Wii U. You also have Bind of Isaac. Again, not a new game. You have any titles coming to the eStore for Nintendo, like, um, Jack, do you know that game where you punch and teleport through walls? Uh, no? Yeah. Overall, the fact is, there aren't a lot of new games for the Switch just yet, but they're coming. We have Mario coming in the December holiday season, I think. We also know they're coming up with the new Xenogears, possibly bringing uh, Persona 5, and uh, I'm gonna butcher this name. Is it Sh Shin Megai Tensei? You know what I'm talking about, Jack? It's like the, the, the base game of where Persona 5, or Pers the Persona games came from. Tens Megumi Tensei? Ten you are not helping, Jack. <laughs> You're fired. New games are coming, and hopefully a good amount of multiplayer games as well. No, I did not forget uh, Snipper Clippets nor the 1 2 Switch. I'm not going to count those two as full on games. I'm, I'm just not. No matter how fun Snipper Clips are or is, I'm not going to count it as a full on total game. Just not. You can state your hate in the comment section below. Second thing is the battery line. Because the Switch has a wide gambit of games for it, you're gonna go from anywhere between three hours, something like Breath of the Wild, if you put the brightness down all the way low, to somewhere between six to possibly even eight hours with something simple like that farming game I spoke of earlier. How you manage and how you utilize the device is probably going to manage up to you, how you have your screen settings, how often you play the game, and exactly what's going on in the game. But other than that, you're going to be totally fine with three to six hours of gameplay. Two more points when it comes to the Switch is the actual software itself, the Nintendo Switch OS. I don't think there's actually even a name for the operating system just yet, but a lot of people had an issue with it not launching with Netflix. Can you believe that? Yeah, but see, side note here, isn't this kind of what people got mad at the Xbox One for? Trying to be entertainment and a gaming station at the same time? I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna toss that thought out there, that, that, that little bit of shade, you know? You don't want the Xbox One to have all these cable and entertainment management stuff, but you're getting upset that the Switch don't have Netflix. I don't know, I, I don't know. It's coming, uh, supposedly possibly rumored to be coming later on an update, and I can see that happening for sure, but first and foremost, the Switch is just a gaming console for the go. I mean, you have YouTube on the 3DS, sure, but who watches YouTube on the 3DS? Jack, if you watch YouTube on the 3DS, I swear I'm gonna throw it out the window. <laughs> now, the screen size of the Switch actually does make sense to have something like Netflix, especially with removing the Joy-Cons, you actually have quite the decent size screen. It's kind of like a miniature tablet. Turn it sideways. It's just, it reminds me of the uh, Sony Xperia, but you don't really need it at launch. And I think people kind of jumped on certain bandwagons to give this console hate. Coming from someone who's been really upset with Nintendo for about half a decade, listen to me. I think a lot of people are bashing this for reasons they shouldn't be. And last and not least, when it comes to the OS and the system overall, online multiplayer. Now. Well, until I believe fall or December or winter or whatever, we're gonna have free online play for Nintendo Switch. That's fine. Uh, but what about after? How much is it gonna cost for online services? We don't know yet. There's rumors, but I don't like going off of rumors because you gotta think about the Japanese market, the economy of switching the uh, currency over. It's, it's just, it's, it's not enough information to go off on. 
However, I will say this. They are coming out with a Pokemon game for the Switch. It's, it's I mean, it's a cash cow. Come on, they are. If I have to pay money every month just to trade Pokemon with friends on Nintendo Switch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow my stash. I'm gonna blow my stash. So Nintendo, don't make me blow my stash. The only thing that I'm really interested about the Switch right now that they have not yet told us, or at least not us, is how are they gonna integrate like an API and development course for developers? We know we have games being made by developers, sure, but evidently by the interface on the Switch, there's rooms for different apps. So I'm wondering, are they gonna be cool enough, because Nintendo is not cool when it comes to third parties, cool enough to allow third party developers to create apps for Nintendo Switch? And if so, how is that going to work? Because I myself would love to make an app for the Nintendo Switch. So Nintendo, please give us more information about that. I really want to develop an app for the Switch. What will it be? I have no clue. It'll probably be something super simple. At the end of the day, you know what to expect from Nintendo. Don't expect a console that is gonna give you super 4K definitive definition running off a 1070 GPU from like uh, the, G the GTX from Nvidia. It's just not what this is about. It's not Sony, it's not Microsoft. It's, it's, it's more like Google in terms of Android mobile gaming actually. A little bit, a little bit. Well, I would actually like to see like the most uh, graphically intensive, CPU intensive Android game put up against uh, Breath of the Wild and see which one is actually, you know, uh, more intense actually. That actually be a good, good idea to make. Huh. The console itself is solid when you bring in the ideas of games for both single player and multiplayer. It's totally fine. It's really fun. You go from being portable on the go to putting it in a dock at home. It's everything you would want for the price in terms of a mobile game on the go as well as a home console at home. That's my review of the Nintendo Switch. I gotta say, I gotta give it an 8 out of 10. I truly believe this is a right direction for Nintendo. I've been really vocal in, in the past about how I was displeased with the way they were going for the 3DS, the Wii, the Wii U, and much more. And I finally think bringing in a new set of younger developers for the Nintendo Switch and for games like Breath of the Wild has been a massive boost in direction, in cor direction correction for Nintendo. Now we'll see whether or not they stay true to their new course about being third party developer friendly in terms of being friendlier and how well they commit to their community. But we will have to see. But again, eight out of 10, highly recommend it.